Today, I want to share a true story that is very personal. I was serving as a pastor in Rhode Island when the horrific events of 9-11 occurred. Within a few days, I was invited to participate in a memorial service at the Rhode Island State House alongside other clergy in the area to pray for the victims and for peace in the world. The occasion offered us, Christians, Jews, Muslims, Buddhists, Sikhs, an opportunity to interact with each other in brotherhood and prayer. Among the participants was a young African-American minister who served in one of the inner city Baptist churches. As we introduced ourselves, this man looked at me and asked, are you the Armenian priest here? When I told him, yes, he grabbed me in a bear hug and said over and over, thank you, thank you, thank you. I told him, okay, you're welcome, but for what? We had just met. Then he told me his story. Years earlier, he had been a college student living in the city of Providence, away from home for the first time. He got involved with a party crowd, doing drugs, drinking, the list goes on. The partying caught up with him. His grades went into the sewer. He was at a point where he was flunking out of school, where he didn't recognize himself anymore. His parents had worked hard to save enough money for him to get an education. And here he was, throwing it all away. He was ashamed, depressed to the point where he decided to kill himself. One night, he went to the roof of his dorm building, intending to jump off. But at the edge of the roof, he closed his eyes and said aloud, God, if there is some reason for me to live, let me know. Show me some sign. When he opened his eyes, what he saw was a blue neon cross sitting atop a church about a mile away. It became the sign from God that he was seeking. I'll never forget what he told me next. That cross was telling me that God loved me and that things could be turned around. I found out later I had seen the cross on the local Armenian church, but I was too ashamed to go to tell the pastor or anyone else my story and how grateful I was for that cross. His eyes filled with tears, and so did mine. To break the emotion, he said with a slight laugh, obviously I didn't jump, but I always wanted to thank someone from your church for that blue neon cross. So thank you, my Armenian brother, for your church and for the cross that saved my life. Actually, I understood very clearly how that blue cross had become so meaningful for that young man. Why? Because my home parish where I grew up, St. James in Watertown, had an identical blue neon cross atop its structure. It was a landmark in my own life. From the second floor of our house, looking between two large trees, I could see our blue cross in the distance when it was lit up at night. My parents would always say that they felt it was as if God was looking over his people, protecting them. For me, it was a beautiful and comforting sensation. It told me, God is here. So the next time you go to your church, take a moment to gaze up at the cross that sits atop the temple building. As you enter, contemplate why it has been placed there. When you sit in the pews, look upon the cross of Christ sitting on the altar table, sewn into the robes of the priest, the altar service, the choir. Look at the walls of your church, at the 16 crosses that encircle the sanctuary. Each cross stands for an apostle or a saint of the church. See how they frame the sanctuary, embracing it, and you, with God's love. If you wear a cross around your neck, take it in your hand. Think about the power it proclaims. Jesus told us, take up your cross and follow me. The cross of Christ is a sign of God's presence, his real presence of hope, love, and life. And as Jesus said, we all have the ability to take up the cross, to bring its power into our life situations. So, Take up Christ's cross. Proclaim its message. Show it with confidence to the world because people need that message 
For some, it's the difference between life and death. Seeing the cross just might save them. It might save you. And as always, whatever you do, remember, ultimately, the choice is yours.